Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Brain Scratch Commentaries playthrough of Resident Evil 2 2019. We now have to add that qualifier to our titles, yes, of course. Um, but, you know. No, we don't. <laughs> it took a long ass time to get from Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they made 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and several spin offs, and they, they skipped two entirely. I, I don't understand. It was a bold artistic choice, I'll say that. <laughs> Spaceballs 3, the search for Spaceballs 2 Anyway, it is now time to descend into the sewers Which in the original game was just sort of a linear nothing area That you got that you went through on the way to the lab um, Yeah, strictly transition Yeah, in this area it's more of a second big area to explore Rather than being it's... an east wing, west wing uh, arrangement like the station Though it's more of a circle it's my least favorite area in the game, honestly. I like it. Really? What is it um, you don't like about it? Uh, one, it's a little too dark at points. It's just hard for me to see. Oh. Which I know it, I know is technically kind of the point in some areas. It's just sometimes it gets too dark. I never had that problem while I was playing, but it might just be a monitor settings thing. Well, when, you're, um, well, when, you're, uh, when you're playing games, Ryan, because... Um, I don't know what your, your preferences are, but what, do you, like, turn lights off in your room or anything Lights like are usually on. Oh, no. Lights are usually on? All right. I, cause especially with a, a horror-themed games or games I know that have a, a dark atmosphere, I tend to turn the lights off because even something as simple as uh, glare can make things harder to see than they usually are. Monitors in the dark give me headaches, so I don't do that. This scene is yeah. cool. I, 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 say, I say it's because... Uh, one uh, a few years Come ago on. when I was recording. Uh, this scene is cool. Don't talk over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so okay, sorry. we actually get to see William Birkin spear Mr. X through the chest and it, and it, and disembowel him with his claw. Mr. X and Birkin never interacted at all in the original game, so this was a really cool moment for me. Okay. Oh gee. Ow. And we get to see like Mr. X have his freaking guts ripped out, and it's like. Okay, if that happened, then was there a second Mr. X that Leon fights at the end? Because I'm pretty sure that one is dead. <laughs> it would explain a lot. Well, according to the glitch, you can get to uh, Mr. X. Okay, with that done, what were you saying, John? I lost my train of thought. Something <laughs> about it being dark. Claire, you have to get up. Do you like it dark when you play video games? D never mind, never okay. mind. Wake up. It's not a big deal. The other thing I don't like about this area is just that it's, it, like oh Lewis said, it's a circle. It's, it feels very roundabout in a lot of ways. Yeah, kind of is. I mean, if there are ways to go in both directions. There's one door in particular, though, that has a, has a valve handle to open it, but it's broken on one side, so you can only open it from the other side. So, yeah, so it feels need, it feels needlessly kind of. Yeah, if you're playing blind, backtracking you could, a few is. If you're playing blind, you can wind up coming at that from the wrong direction, and that makes it a bit long. But when you know what you're doing on subsequent playthroughs, it's actually pretty easy to just uh, tackle that ahead of time, which is what I do in these playthroughs. We have to assess the situation. Also, uh, 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 the elevator is broke. Sherry's mom might as well be a different character in this version because she's. Simultaneously spacier and more serious, whereas in the original she was just like, "Oh, William, I need to stop him." Or no, no, no. Who treat that bullet wound? Why has like seventeen bullet wounds in his chest? No, no. She wasn't like, "I need to stop him." She was like, "You killed William." That was what she was like in the original. She was just like cr completely cracked by the whole situation. Here she's and nowhere near. She's nowhere near as antagonistic here. Yeah, she's not as antagonistic. She all, well. She's antagonistic toward Leon, but that's a different thing. Um, yeah. Because she, Leon is working with Ada, and she doesn't want Ada to get the... She's a much more sympathetic character here, is the basic thing. And that that that, that that's nice. I'm, I'm happy to see that. Although, she gets killed twice in the same scene. <laughs> <laughs> but on the bright side, we pass the Bechdel test. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that, that does count, yeah. I mean, wouldn't that technically have... Wouldn't we have done that with the first conversation between Claire and Cherry? Pretty sure. Mm, that's true. What is that test you're referring to? If like two women in the same in a movie book or whatever have a conversation with each other that is not about a man, about a man. or men. Yeah. There are a lot of movies that do not pass. 
<laughs> Surprise. And there are a lot of bad and there are a lot of bad movies that do pass, so well, it really it, isn't it's a just good a basis for anything. It's, it's it's not supposed to be like it's not. It's supposed not. To a, it's not a anything. serious metric. It's just a, it, it's just a no. really funny pitfall that a lot of stories fall into for some reason because it's they just, just aren't paying attention when they write. Yeah, um, it's it's just something to show if there's like the how well the female experience is presented. You know, again, like there are like plenty of porn movies, for example, pass the Bechdel test. You know, if there's like <laughs> lesbian stuff in it, but that doesn't mean that they're not sexist. It just means that they pass. But there are also it's just a quick shorthand, is pretty much what a. a it's like if you didn't pass the Bechdel test, the writer was probably not thinking uh, when they wrote uh, in those scenes. Like, so it's it's just it's not it's not. It's not like a big achievement to pass it, but it's sad when you don't. <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that's more what, yeah, you know, what, uh, what Lewis, what Lewis has it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Lewis has it right. Where it's more about if you don't pass than if you do. Anyway, you know? the only <laughs> item in this in the Claire scenario that I actually missed, um, apart from like maybe an item during the final escape when you're when you're running with the uh, with the timer going was this box of submachine gun ammo in the room outside. You see how that's still red? I completely miss I, I completely forgot to look around that room and I just jumped into the sewers without picking up the item. The it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, but you can't get back into this room after you leave it. So uh yeah, pick up the submachine gun ammo. <laughs> I mean I have plenty of submachine gun ammo by the end of the game, so it's not a tragedy. It's just annoying that I, I went to the trouble of cleaning out the police station and the sewers and then found that this one room <laughs> Had an item in it that I didn't get. Point of no return. Yep. Anyway. I mean, if I had noticed it sooner, I probably would have just reloaded that save and gone back and gotten it, but I, I, I was a little tired when I was playing. My focus was on not getting killed. Woo. Splash. Ugh, it smells like poo gas. It does, and the characters comment. See? I'm pretty sure you already smell like shit, given the amount of corpses you surrounded yourself in. Well, you know, corpses smell a different kind of bad. Uh, it's also not... Still smells bad as my It's point. also not going to cling to you unless you've been swimming in them, uh, which we might be doing. It's a lot of blood. Well, I mean, uh, the blood part of the zombies probably doesn't smell all that rotting, because well, the zombies have to operate on, on, on body running... To, to a certain extent. Magic. In fact, there's this actually pretty compelling theory about how liquor's form that involves the zombies not getting enough calories and that setting off a reaction in the body that a secondary infection is is designed to respond to, which transforms the zombies into liquors. Which would which is, you know, cool and plays into the into the way dead zombies turn into crimson heads in the first game. Makes a certain amount of sense too. But you know, if you, 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 an argument could be made that if you're thinking that deeply into the biology of these goddamn mutant zombie monsters, you're, you're probably a little bit too into the series, maybe. So I I don't know. We've we, we've seen people delve deeper into stupider things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the cable car serves a completely different purpose, and uh, well, I mean, it takes you to the lab in the original, but it it serves a different function. In in this one, it's actually the umbrella uh, cable car in this, rather than just a transport between um, uh, a factory and some other ones. Ooh. Oh, hello. So there's 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 a bunch of zombies in this room, but there's also items to pick up. So you can run past these guys if you want. I didn't see you there because you're in shadow. But uh, you wanna you wanna at least. Disable these zombies so that you can do uh, item picking up things. Oh, this seems like a good place for a grenade. And I'm doing this now because you can't get back into this room easily once you leave it from the other side because you jump down another goddamn uh, one way passage. You, you can get back here once you get back to the place you got in here from the first place. Once they're on the ground, it's like laughably easy to just circle around. I killed that one. My knife. I want my knife back. Yeah. They're a surprisingly valuable resource in this game. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to remember what the combination was. I'm like, 
Oh, wait. I, Z -F, yeah. I remember. I was checking a notepad that I had off to the side where I wrote them all down during my first run. All for machine gun bullets. A lot that of feel gun. when you, yeah. you know, I kind of respect when a game wants you to write stuff down to remember it later. Like, I mean, granted, it's annoying, but... I don't do... I just take snapshots. Well, I mean, nowadays... Well, now yeah, you, you can, can do, do that. that but <laughs> a like, whole uh, one fra flame round. Okay, good. Thanks. Actually, that was something that I really liked about uh, the Dragon Quest three port on... Well, in, on SNES in Japan and Game Boy Color in the United States. They had a feature where if you pressed the select button, you would remember an NPC's line of dialogue. So if there was something that you needed to... Re that was a pretty nonlinear game where... You know, you had to find clues from NPCs and stuff to know where you're supposed to go, but instead of needing to write it down, you could catalog it within the game, which was yeah. also, which was also, it was convenient. But I just, I like when the game will tell you something, but it is up to you to remember it, and it doesn't just nag you about it over and over again. I just, I, mean, I like that. I mean, there are games like Dragon, like Dragon Age that have, like, uh, logs of, of uh, conversations that you had. And Baldur's Gate actually gave you an in-game journal feature where you can type stuff in. So you can either roleplay out your own little game journal, or you could actually just use it to keep track of important information if you wanted. Uh, I, I thought that was cool. Sherry, I'm coming. I think it's a little bit easier to write your own on, notes Sherry. in a game like right um, in a, any game on the PC because you have access to a full keyboard. Another game that did that was Hotel Dusk on the DS, which is kind of like a point-and-click adventure game. But since they, the game had a weird gimmick where you turned the DS on its side so that it was like you were holding a, a book. book. Which you know is a little dumb because it's awkward to hold it like that, but it's a it's a decent enough game, and they let you use the touch screen to write down notes, which I also enjoy. So yeah, yeah, Hotel Tusk uh, is Hotel Tusk is good, just not fantastic. Yeah. Um. Okay, so now we're at the chess piece puzzle, which has been greatly expanded. Logic puzzles. <laughs> it's been greatly expanded, and now it's in both scenarios rather than just being Leon's keys to open the way out of the police station. There are six. Um. There are six. Uh, oh, this is... Uh, I was doing this more to show off that you can do it. But if you want, you can save a screenshot of that so that you can figure it out later. But there's a different solution to this in the A and B scenarios. There are six chess pieces that you need to use, but two of them are just given to you right away. So you're really just trying to find the other four. Um, the logic puzzle itself is they give you, like, uh, a vague idea of the order in which um, in which the pieces should be uh, place like this one goes here this one was across from this one that kind of logic puzzle and then you're it's up to you to figure out uh, where things go in relation to that the curveball it throws you in the B scenario is that the knight is not in the space marked for the knight <laughs> they marked a space for the knight in the B scenario <laughs> that was just there to screw with anyone trying to intrude um but yeah, the reason that the the chess piece stuff has been moved to the sewers is that the company involved that that made the sewers ha, is run by a chess fanatic who named the thing after a chess piece, which is more of a real world thing than you'd think. I've seen that kind of that kind of naming convention used for random companies on like on like the, the side of uh, tractor trailer trucks and stuff. I, I don't think any of them would go as far as to design special custom lock pieces based on chess pieces, but no. you know, <laughs> it's a little bit more. Plus, they had a lot of money to burn. It's a little bit more realistic than the prison janitor just being really into chess and making his own custom lock pieces for the sewers. Um, you know, it's, a li uh, it's gone from two percent logic to fifteen percent logic, so that's good, isn't it? I think it's good. Don't forget the map. A little bit. So yeah. Uh, yeah, geez, this place is big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Uh, I like it. I like having a second exploration area to exp to 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 to, uh, to give the second half of the game some substance because the second half of Resi Two was linear sewers, linear factory, linear laboratory. Well, semi-linear laboratory. Some people will say, "Oh, the labs were so explorative that they weren't." They weren't really that expensive. No, they were not. They, it was a it was a no. back and forth between two areas. So it was it was it was like it was linear, but it was a line that you started in the middle of, <laughs> you know, um, and you weren't exactly allowed to mix up uh, which one you went to first either, because you had to ap activate one thing and then activate another. I'm just pulling these pieces off so that I can check them 
and give them their proper names so that it, it's easier for in me the to... original game like 50 percent of the adventure was the police station and the remaining 25 percent go to the sewer and the lab respectively. yeah and i mean in resi one you had the guard house which at least had some exploration going for it uh even though it was kind of small in um in resident evil 2 you basically just had the police station which was already a more streamlined version of the mansion to begin with so the exploration element was somewhat lacking in two. I like that they made this section, the sewer, large and circular so that you could explore it more. But uh, they kind of repeated that design ethos with the lab because one, because most of the exploration in the, in the lab is often one wing of it, which is also designed in a circle, just a smaller circle than the sewers. It, it, it creates a more consistent experience than the original Resi 2, but I can see some people getting a little tired of those two areas after a while. It's not as, it's not as fun and sandboxy as the police station, so the second half is still kind of weak in comparison to the first. It's just not as weak in comparison to the first as the original game had it, in my, in, in my opinion. So yeah, um, here we are. The, the the bridge that used to be like a major slowdown set piece thing is now just like a bridge that happens. You throw so many people don't come over here and get the tool first. <laughs> oh, that's because you're rushing through without exploring the rooms, you stupid dumbasses. Explore every room thoroughly. That's oh, man. It's Resident Evil. A stupid dumbass, as opposed to a <laughs> smart dumbass? You know, there are some surprisingly lucky dumbasses in the world that do smart things without meaning them, so yeah. Lucky doesn't mean. Uh, pulling, you mean pulling a Homer Simpson? <laughs> but yeah, pulling, yeah, pulling a Homer. To, 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 de definition: to, to succeed despite idiocy. Yeah. <laughs> this file over here also tells you that the combination to the safe in the same room is written on the side, so you can figure that out for yourself. I mean, if you just you know look around and look at the side, look around and turn the camera a bit, you might notice without really looking for it that there's numbers written on the side and. But um. They, I always kill this zombie just to make sure he's not in the way. This zombie right next to the goddamn locker, though. It's got, like, herbs next to it, too, so you have to get close enough to wake it up. Anyway, yeah, the last locker in the game. And I think it's a good one. What was in here? I want to say inventory expansion. Nah, I think that was a different locker. No, 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 okay. It's the, it's this gun is a gun now. upgrade locker. Yeah, this adds the... Uh, reinforced frame to your snub nose revolver which is the most unrealistic weapon upgrade in the game surprisingly uh you can't just change the caliber of a gun's load by slapping on a bunch of harder metal pieces <laughs> um uh i don't know that seems like it makes sense to me <laughs> well it doesn't yeah but zombies aren't a real thing either so i mean uh, the the idea of the upgrade is that the reinforced uh frame allows the gun to fire more powerful bullets the problem with that is that, like, it doesn't change the size of, I think, the, the actual, uh... The chamber. The chamber. Yeah. Well, let, let me see what these... Oh, it does have a different chamber in the upgrade piece. Huh. Interesting. But, you know, I think you would have to swap the, the chamber in and out to actually change calibers like that. Yeah. yeah the guns aren't Legos. I think the reason that they... <laughs> well, yes and no. You can swap parts and pieces out of a gun. Uh, but... The, the the thing about the upgrade here is that it also will, it allows you uh, to 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 load in both calibers of of pistol ammo interchangeably, which uh, you know doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, but you know there it is. Maybe Claire is just a master of really fat of really quickly swapping the the entire revolver chamber in and out. Uh, I don't know. But. Which is doesn't have the same ring to his master of unlocking. It's, like, it's also much longer. Master of gun part swapping. In any case, the the reinforced frame allows you to fire the high-powered rounds, which you find quite rarely in Claire's campaigns, but not as rarely as the Resi, th as the Resi 7 uh, Magnum ammo is found. So you can get some use out of it. In fact, I would just recommend carrying the Magnum as a second handgun, because your, your Browning High Power is still a better handgun. For the uh, for the low caliber rounds, for the nine millimeters, but you know, whoo, got a whole seven magnum ammo. That's like yay, one big. Well, thankfully, enemy it, it, 
seven zombies. Yeah, thankfully, it thankfully comes with you know a full chamber. Yeah, it does. That's that that's that's a good thing. Is that whenever you get an upgrade that that affects ammunition, be it the reinforced frame or just an ammo expansion, it will um, it will at least uh, give you fill you up once. It will give you the the same number of extra ammunition that it would that it would requ that it would give you. So like the the um, the ex the extended uh, magazine will give you the whole half a clip that you would gain from that magazine. Really, dude? I have a, that was my gun. I I have a new gun, and I'm tempted to try it out on this guy. But you know, fuck it. I want to save those bullets. If it was the lightning hawk, Kill you sure. Bastard. Likely Back to the box. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, I put my handgun ammo away, didn't I? I need to yes, read. I just used my handgun. <laughs> okay. A cool thing about the item boxes in this game, though, uh, I mentioned this earlier, is that you can take out um, multiples in smaller stacks. You can specify how many bullets you want to take out. So maybe you want to use, maybe you expect to use only so many handgun bullets with, between one run of, um, uh, of the item box and another. Well, you can take out seven handgun bullets if you've got like 20 or 30 of them, and then just reload the gun once and hey, you have an empty space in your inventory now. It's, uh, Man, that looks like the same Asian cop from Raccoon City. And the same fat guy we've run into like five times. Yeah, yeah I guess they got multiple jobs. Yeah, this this is also one of those areas where I just recommend just just kill them all. Yeah. You're gonna be coming back through here a lot. Yep. Oh, for fuck's sake! Die! 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 They're already dead. Die but again. Deader. Experience <laughs> final <Die>. death. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this zombie pisses me off. He he won't wake up here unless you shoot him or knife him or something. But uh, he'll be awake and hiding just around the corner uh, when you run back through this hallway after you've gotten the last of the chess pieces. Uh, I think it always happens after you do the uh, after you do the king queen chess puzzle. The valve uh, will stay in your inventory until you open up all the valve doors. A surprising number of let's players don't seem to realize that the valve next to the um, the, me the medallion door after it closes behind you in the ace scenario is supposed to use the same valve tool. So you can go back and you can go back with this and get and uh, get the last of the items in the police station that way. Which I'm glad they did because one of the thing one of the one of the issues I do have with Resident Evil is that there's no real interconnection between the uh, lab and the police station. Like you can probably go back to the police station, but it involves a long trek back. And it's it's not really worth doing unless for some reason during the game you're just really low on resources and are desperate to go back to, to get to get some more ammo and heals. So you're gonna go back and scour every last inch of the police station. Um, yeah. Oh, these enemies suck. I like them. <laughs> I like them better than the spiders they replace anyway. Well, that's that's fair, but they're also an enemy where accuracy is required. They have this like armored carapace on one part of it. They shoot these little buggers at you that swim through the water at you, so you want to shoot those down. This is definitely where I once I once I expose their shoulder thing is when I use when I tended to use Magnum. Yeah, uh, the submachine gun is not the best weapon to use on these guys. It's it's not powerful enough. Yeah. Oh, it's swimming at me! It's swimming at me! It's swimming at me! Oh. Uh, eat grenade. Grenade for your yeah, trouble. Grenades are really good for these guys. The thing about grenades, though, is that they're less effective when used as a defensive item. So you actually need to throw them if you're aiming to do damage. Um, I mean, you can put them into a zombie's head and destroy that zombie's head, but the splash damage would be less effective. So it's it's not it's not good against group. And you will generally just kill a zombie if uh, if a regular grenade explodes on the floor next to them. I've used I've used I've used a single hand grenade to wipe out a group of like four or five zombies. He stayed dead when that happened. It took all that machine gun bullet ammo just to get its eye exposed. Yeah, turn this way, you stupid. Monster. 
motherfucker. I need to actually shoot the eye. Ugh. All right, climb up. Oh, am I not? I'm not centered enough. That's the thing. Ooh, there's this like one stretch of uh, 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 brown. That won't fly. Oh, of course, one. Well, it did. It did. It, it did pretty good once the eye was exposed. It was just getting the eye exposed. Yeah, once once yeah. the eye is once the eye is exposed, the machine gun will do good. It's 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 the armor that is not so good against, against which I guess is because it's low caliber ammo. Bit of attention to detail uh, put into the way damage. But yeah, there are quite a few of these things, and it is my intense pleasure to kill them all. Because in horror games, for some reason, it's the opposite for me when I'm in when I'm in a stealth game. If I can kill things, I'll kill things. <laughs> uh, uh, for, uh, the one particular sequence when you're uh, in like in the the infested area where there's like four of them swimming around I try to ignore all of them yeah yeah because I'm I don't, I don't like wasting all my it, ammo in that it, area it's 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 an ammo sink and uh to be fair at, when you're playing as Claire you can you can kill those four a lot more easily once you've got the spark shot which is after which I is, did not like using the spark shot oh my god so many people are saying that that, that the spark shot is useless or that they don't like using it and I'm just like it's Claire's best weapon. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Especially when it's upgraded to do more damage. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's good stuff. Nah. The, 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 only, <laughs> the only real limitation to the spark shot is that uh, you completely waste a shot. You, you compl completely waste multiple shots if you don't accurately hit. Um, so don't, don't fire unless that reticle is right on top of the enemy. And then, like, uh, you need to be able to stay moving slowly enough to keep to get the to get the thing to full charge while the wire is still attached to the enemy. Yes, hello. Okay. You wait right there while I deal with this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> the other side was like, I'll save you. <laughs> Bam! So sad. I mean, unnecessary. Satisfying. <laughs> it's unnecessary because like the zombies in Resi 1, they'll just sort of stand there like a dumbass with a, with a, with a grenade in their mouth and it explodes on its own. But you can shoot No it defensive out. items. Oh! Oh. When it, uh, does that do double damage? Yeah, yes. it does uh, double damage and it prevents you from using a defensive item. So you don't want to don't want to get caught in a group of zombies like I just. What if you held two knives? Uh, you would be holding two knives in two hands that you can't use, and so wouldn't be able to do any. This is where the grenade would have been useful. Yeah, it would have been. In fact, I think I still have one. No, because I oh no 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 he remember he got doubled so he, you can't get the prompt regardless. Well, no, I think he was only getting attacked by one initially, but unless it just kind of jumped right to the second one. When there's like three or four zombies all close together like this, throwing a regular hand grenade as a regular weapon is a great way to get rid of them. Uh, no, no, you're Oh, yeah, out. I'm out. Take a bath. Which way to the Smash Tournament? <laughs> I know for a fact you're lying. You're not carrying any deodorant. Right? Ooh, critical hit. Ha. Critical hits with, with headshots aren't as good as they were in Remake 1, but they're very reassuring because that's a, that's a zombie corpse you just don't have to worry about anymore. The door to the treatment facility, I think, or it might be that door over there in the hallway, something you can easily forget because it's completely optional. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not a very valuable option. Got a few items in it. Yeah, well, yeah, that's items you didn't have before. Yeah. I also love lifting this bridge when there's zombies up top there because they will do. They do not care about the height difference. <laughs> yeah, well, there's also another thing where there's also another thing where that's kind of an improvement on the original games because Resi 2 didn't have a lot of optional rooms. Resi 1 did, but 2 doesn't. So uh, I mean, it had a few, especially in the lab. There's a couple of optional rooms. It was basically all the exploration the lab had was that one room with the moth in it where you do the, the, the fingerprint puzzle with the, with the computer um, where you have to scan your character's fingerprint in and then wait until the B scenario so you can scan the other character's fingerprint in and open that one door. 
Oh, and you yeah. also have to remember to go to the lock in the A scenario, uh, unlock it as Leon or Claire, and then go into the B scenario and unlock it with the other character. Man, the USS video cassette. That is the worst ship I've ever seen in my life. Who, who's going to be able to float <laughs> on this thing? <laughs> no, it's like a surfboard. Oh, hi. Nope, 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 nope. I'm too low on health. Yeah, I kind of am. <laughs> you see, with any cut on our body at all, swimming through that river of... Shit. Yeah, Shit. Yeah. That's just gonna... You're gonna, not gonna die from a viral inf infect infectation. What? You're not gonna die because you became a zombie. You're gonna die because you get malaria. All right. Dude, the, the poo water probably has T virus all over it. <laughs> oh no, I got the poo water on me. I mean, yes, you're probably right. I just got, I just, I just got impatient. Oh, I hit the, f I wasted a magnum bullet hitting the floor. I feel sad. I was surprised you even bother wasting ammo on it at all. Well, it was, it was, uh, it was in between me and escape, and it was still alive. It can't hurt you anymore, Lewis. It's on the floor. Since I killed all these zombies, I have like no fear of going down these steps and picking up like the one item that's down there. I think it's a knife. Um, yeah. I mean, might as well go get it. I'm going to the item box to heal up anyway, so I might as well pick up the excess stuff while I'm here. There's no other reason to come down here, though, because, like, I don't know. If I remember correctly, there might... Oh, there might be some ammo, like, over here, but I'm not sure. All I know is, like, you start down here as Leon, maybe. Um... I think so. That's another. That's another difference between Leon and Claire is that they come at. They come into the. Oh, now I remember why I was coming down here. We. It's, it's a quick trip back. <laughs> I like the reactions the character have to the shit slide. <laughs> uh... Didn't sound. This is ne not nearly as appealing as it did in the brochure. <laughs> Come to Raccoon City for the shit water slide. <laughs> oh my god. If you're, I have to try this out. Come explore our sewers. Notice, sewers may not contain any mutated turtles. <laughs> Raccoon City is not responsible for any and all inf infections that one might obtain. I, I see these two here and I'm like, are they going to come back to life when I walk over them? <sighs> YOLO. <laughs> and then I run up the stairs. <laughs> well, Lewis... This is the Resident Evil universe where that saying is very clearly not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Jesus. Oh, leave him alone. No. Now I'll leave him alone. You just wasted a magnum round. No, that was a zombie headshot. That is... That is no, that was a magnum round. Okay, you know what? A magnum round that you spend... Is better than a magnum round left in your inventory, not the only, used at the end of the, the game. The only one I'm unhappy about is the one I missed and shot the floor with. But you know, there's enough there's enough magnum ammo that I can afford one or two of those and still have magnum ammo for the final bosses. So like, you know, magnum gun is strictly boss gun. Mega elixirs are made to be used. God damn it. I miss. <laughs> I, I agree, but depends on the final. I miss the ammunition that that Resi Five had, where you actually did spray a can of first aid spray on yourself, or on your partner. That Wait, moment you could they... shoot a first aid can at somebody. No, no, like, like because all the <laughs> items in Resi Five were real time because it's a it's a, it's a, a multiplayer game and all. What you would wind up We're doing, options. what you would wind up doing, yeah, is uh, you'd. You'd uh you'd spray the uh, the first aid spray when you used it because it had to happen in real time. So it was like the goop juice from Resi Seven, only a spray can of it. Uh, uh, so so you'd spray you 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 spray yourself with Axe when you needed to, to heal, or you'd spray oh, it all no. in your part. <laughs> I'd rather take the zombie inf infection, honestly. Like <laughs> there are precious few things in this world that are worse than smelling like a middle school locker room. I'm sorry. 